so just to explain what those Moscow bums were they started with 685,000 men and had over 400,000 killed so that's almost 60% killed and I think what's what what this book gives me is such a classic examples really of not only how to act but also how not to act Mm. so for one from a leadership perspective keep your people informed of what is happening and that's one thing that struck me about this book oftentimes these guys had no idea what was happening what was going on what was the next move they they did not know what was happening Another thing, and this is clearly a lesson that we talk about all the time, is is you got to be humble. Hmm. Because from Napoleon's perspective, he thought he could pull this off, right? But he underestimated Russia's strength. He underestimated the time it would take. He underestimated the readiness of his own troops. He underestimated their strategy. So, again lesson learned for the millionth time be humble and then getting to this this uh, this just that that closing statement about Moscow bums I think that is a great reminder to treat people with respect and we talked about this I think it was the last podcast or maybe the podcast before that doesn't mean you have to respect people Because if you don't know them, you can't just give away respect. But you treat people with respect because you don't know what they've been through. You don't know what struggles they've seen. How would you know that? And so when you throw out things like Moscow bum and you don't know that this is a guy that's been actually through hell, don't do that. And the last thing, you know, again, to take away from this book for me is to remember. You know, not just you in the business world, of course. Remember your frontline people. Remember what grind they're going through. Remember what it feels like to them to be out on the job site or in the factory or on the front line doing sales. Remember what that is but also for everyone remember the actual frontline troops the suffering the fear the discomfort the cold and the wet and the hunger remember that reality of war and remember that it impacts those young soldiers and those young Marines. Remember them. Because it's really, really easy to forget. So, I think that's all I've got from the diary of a Napoleonic foot soldier pretty epic read to hear that side of it yeah totally different from sitting here and reading Napoleon's maxims yeah thinking about his wonderful brilliance yeah yeah bailing on his guys bailing on his guys oh fresh reserves are here cool I'm gonna use them to get out of here yeah yeah and you know I get it. I was just reading another book. Uh, I can't. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But it was, it was talking about, you know, as a leader, you're supposed to stay alive, right? Mm. Like you can't take unnecessary risks as a leader. You 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 can't be at the front of the assault. You shouldn't be. Yeah. Sometimes you have to be, but you need to stay alive. Yeah. And so maybe you could give Napoleon a little credit there for that. Um. But maybe not. Maybe not too much. 
Yeah, uh, so. This one time on Seinfeld where George. Do you really want to go there right now? <laughs> in a way, because it, it sounds dumb, but this, that, just what you said right there, mm-hmm. though. This, because this seemed what, like, this seems like what Napoleon was like. Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Napoleon. So George, this Got real, it. real kind of, this guy. A fire breaks out and he um, pushes over an old lady, some kids, you know, to, to escape. Right? Oh, damn. To escape the fire, right? So everyone, after the fire, it, the fire, there was no fire. It was just some burnt, like burgers oh. or something. So they're questioning <laughs> him. And he's like, and that's what he says, kind of what you just said there. He's like, I had to lead these people to safety. And if, you know, all is lost if the leader dies kind of thing. That's mm-hmm. what he was saying. Everyone's looking at him like, oh, my god. They're gosh, shaking you, their heads. Yeah, like, bro, we saw what you did. You know, you mm-hmm. stepped on the old lady going out kind of thing. So it kind of, it's kind of that deal. I think that's what Napoleon did. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you. And it's. You know, and then in the Navy, the the captain of the ship goes down with the ship. Right. That's right? like the old at school, least, right? At least he's the last guy off. Yeah. At least, at a bare minimum, he's the last guy off. But yeah. oftentimes he goes down with the ship because he's trying to fight it and save it the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, that's Napoleon kind of the old not, thing. didn't carry that out. But no. he came back from this and got exiled and everything was, you know, his life was ruined. Sure. But you sound like he ruined a hell of a lot more lives than just his own. With this experience, yeah, interesting how he they kept mentioning the lice, you know. Like yeah, that's, that's good when they do that because it really does give you a feel of like, yeah. you know, you know how uh, it's a little thing. Yeah, seems like no big deal. Yeah, but Until it's constantly lice. there. Constantly there. Boom, boom, or the hunger, or the cold when it's just constantly there because you don't really think of that. You know, you yeah. think of the firefight and the bombs and the, you know, those big things, yep. but the, all those little things adding up is like, man. yeah, because the lice are constant, eating just you. constantly eating you. Is that what lice does? Eat, eat, yeah, you, I eat guess your so. skin? I don't know too much about lice. Yeah, I just know I that know. my wife freaks out when they come in the house. Yeah. Which when you got four kids, <laughs> it, w- there was times where we just had, you know, a lice epidemic in the house. Yeah, I'd yeah. come home and it looked like uh Ghostbusters showed up and were <laughs> securing the property. Quarantine. Yeah, quarantine. Jeez. But yeah. you didn't have that opportunity for these guys. Yeah. Yeah. You just like you pick up some of that stuff in all these books, what those soldiers are suffering through. Yeah. You know, whether it's uh, you know, jungle foot, foot rot, trench foot. Yeah. You you just your feet are getting destroyed yeah. by the weather. Or you get the sores on your back. There's just all these things. All yeah. these things. You like Travis Mills, remember he was talking about how um the, the salt stuff on, on, oh, yeah. on your back or whatever, the salt crystals forming on yeah. your back. Like, no one told me about that. Yeah. And I heard, you know, a lot of my friends have been to com- no one talked about that kind yeah. of stuff, you know. They were hot and sweaty for a long period of time with no showers. Yeah. So it's just And just humans collecting. don't humans aren't you you're not used to that. Yeah. You're not used to, you, people aren't used to that. We're used to shower every day. Yeah. You know? Hell yeah. Fresh bar of soap. Two times a day sometimes. Yeah. If you're training. It, but you, you can't get used to it. It's like your feet, yeah. right? You know, some people are barefoot all the time, like my son. He's yeah. barefoot all the time. He can sprint on jagged rocks with yeah. no effect. Yeah. He, he doesn't even notice it. He's like Tarzan. So it is on Kauai. Yeah. I'm with barefoot. me. I'm all sensitive, you know, the feet, because I got to wear shoes. Yeah. And I try and try and harden them up when I can, but when yeah. I, lately I've been on the road too much. My feet are weak. Dang, bro. Weak. Yeah. Makes oh. me angry when I see my son sprinting across jagged rocks <laughs> as if it's nothing. Yep. Tougher than you, bro. Yeah. Dang. That makes me mad. <laughs> I, can see that. I can't even fake it either. No. You know what I mean? You yeah. try and act all tough mm-hmm. when you're walking. Yeah. Try and act like it's not hurting yeah but it hurts yeah yeah i had that too when I, when I moved here from Kauai, i had that where my really? feet were all tough because yeah you go barefoot for you wear slippers all the time you go barefoot everywhere but slippers are different bro for those of you that don't know hawaiian flip slippers flops. are flip-flops yeah. but fl- flip-flop i wear flip-flops all the time too yeah but it's totally different right but barefoot. you don't take them off all the time no so it here's to give you an idea of how common being barefoot is on in elementary school i went to school with no shoes on Mm -hmm. before and no one said anything Mm -hmm. and if you go to school with shoes on you take them off immediately because you go run around and recess and stuff like that you don't you just don't did i ever tell you that story about my son Mm -mm. so my son was homeschooled for a while sure and when he was homeschooled he was he would surf a lot 
<laughs> even by even by his standards <laughs> sure. or my standards. Yeah. But one time he cut his foot on the reef, mm-hmm. and he came up to the house, and my wife says, you know, hey, go clean that out, put a Band-Aid on it, put on some socks and shoes. Mm-hmm. And he says, no. And my wife says, what? He says, no. She says, hey, go clean that out, put a Band-Aid on it, and put on some socks and shoes now. Otherwise, it's going to get dirty. He's like, no. She says, hey, go and put a Band-Aid on that, clean it off, put a Band-Aid on it, put on socks and shoes. And he says, I can't. And she says, why not? And he says, I don't have any shoes. <laughs> so it had been, since he was homeschooled, it had been a really long time and since he had had to wear shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he had outgrown his shoes. So it had been months <laughs> since he had had shoes. Yeah, no need to buy them. Yeah, right? don't need those Just things. Home, why are you doing those things? <laughs> so, so yeah, after that, it was, we, I did, I, when I got home, I had to, she says, hey, go take him to get shoes. I said, why? He says, he need shoes. Because he cut his foot on the reef. Okay. Well, why had to get him shoes? Got to get some shoes. But yeah. yeah. So, same thing. As you. Barefoot. Just He was just barefoot all the time. And he's still yeah. barefoot a lot of the time. Yeah. Tough That's feet. why his feet are tough. Yeah. So, Indian feet. And then now, you know, you come to the mainland where you wear shoes all the time. And we don't wear shoes in the house. In Hawaii, that's a thing. And so, still, you know. But if you have, like, a carpet or something like that feet get soft yeah yeah bummer Amen. well remember those little things that yeah, people fun. out on the front lines are are putting up with and suffering through on a daily basis yeah kind of seems like that book escalated quickly with the hardship it, it, it did and I, I think it caught everyone off guard yeah yeah, yeah. again I, I like to try and think about the guy the guys back then and they're thinking ah oh, cool you know i've been working at my whatever crappy job I have and then all of a sudden adventure time yeah, yeah. and good food time Why and, and get treated like bread. a hero time yeah. and and then they roll into the Russian campaign and it's no not, it's not so cool. much mm-hmm. it's actually the exact opposite <sighs> yeah one second you're eating bread and butter and wine or was it brandy brandy Both. wine cheese and then the next minute you're killing your friend for his clothes yeah because you gotta and live yeah I didn't cover some of those sections where he's getting robbed they're gonna kill him i mean his own guys yeah you know or different there's another little you know because it's french soldiers and there's some german soldiers that are on the same side but what do you think happens when things go crazy all of a sudden they start forming their own the gangs right yeah they're gonna stick together yeah horrible horrible well speaking of crappy jobs yeah, maybe you could do a crappy job of telling us how we could support this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd prefer if you did a good job. But. I'm gonna try to do my best. Oh, back to that what you were just saying the, the uh, um, you know you form into little gangs. Yeah, in times of did that happen in Hawaii too? No, on Seinfeld. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I kind of I'm gonna say it anyway. No, there's this movie. It's called The Divide. I think it's called The Divide. I'm pretty sure it's like this weird movie mm-hmm. and some apocalyptic thing happens in the beginning mm-hmm. and everyone like retreat in this apartment building retreats to the basement where the superintendent or somebody lives and this guy is uh, uh he's like a one of these doomsday prepper type mm-hmm. dudes you know yeah. and and i think he even <laughs> has a man <laughs> a manual or something he wrote a man i don't know so they all go anymore? down but it's everybody it's like you know a pre- a girl with the, uh, her daughter um you know some dudes some you yeah, know whatever. they got Just, the broad cross section of society exactly that's, right I, and, I don't i haven't seen the movie but i know the plot line yeah, exactly. cool <laughs> check <laughs> But that's what the that's essentially what the movie is about right there. Where everyone's just we're all just people, right? We all live in this building. Yeah. We're all kinda and then they start to just divide into um oh. teams and groups and they fight and and the harder stuff gets, the more violent it gets. Yeah. So they end up like killing each other in all these ways. Like certain people have certain assets so they can offer like value to this group, you know, kind of mm. thing. And it's all within like Who becomes this, the dominant group? The dominant Evil group is uh, is these just two friend guys, 
I, the person who lives is just the one girl. Only one girl lives. Yeah, everyone else dies in one way or another. Yeah, mm. it's it's a weird movie. Spoiler alert! But yeah, <laughs> it, it it's weird because you don't know like who caused the bomb, you know, and all that. Well, so, there's a great book by that. Cormac McCarthy called The Road. This is a book. It's not a movie. Well, there actually there is a movie. Yeah, but you don't know what happened there either. Just everything is different now. And it's different and gray and dark and everything's dead. Yeah. There's like nothing living. Yeah. No plants are living. Nothing's living. Yeah. And there's humans kind of wandering and, yeah, and so. trying to trying to survive. It's yeah. a great book. But yeah. But yeah, that's the the movie essentially they just kinda omit all these details. Like that doesn't make sense. That's why the movie's weird, but when you think about it, that's what the movie's about. We should put Cormac McCarthy The Road on the website for people to uh to uh, get to see what else. Along with the Diary of a Napoleonic Foot Soldier, so people can get this. This would be a hard one to get. I don't know. It's a rare book. I don't even know where I got it from. Check. Yeah. Where, yeah. So either somebody mailed it to me, which I appreciate. If it was you, let me know. Or I just had it. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. My books are out of control right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, man. You have a dope little collection. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too little anymore. Cool. 